welcome back to the Smitty and D Show. Of course, I am Tony D. And over to my right, guys, I fell in love with her a long time ago. Uh, you guys can catch this video. It is Miss Julie, and her TikTok name or profile name is JSED33. Check out this video. So this lady asks, this black lady, um, are white women really that scared of black women? And I'm going to say yes. And this is my opinion as a white woman who is 53 years old and has lived in the South in Georgia in my entire life. And, but it is, it's not being scared, but it's a fear. And it's not a physical fear. It is the mental fear. It is what we see in you and what we see you doing and how it challenges us and the fear of that. So we see black women and we see how strong you are. We see you coming together as a community. We see you supporting each other. We see you supporting your community, supporting your families, supporting your children, going out and fighting, fighting for your rights, um, being authentic in your race and in your femininity. Welcome to the show, guys. Miss Julie, how are you? Great. How welcome, about you? welcome. Happy Black History Month. Oh, thank you. I mean, <laughs> um, appreciate that. <laughs> that was the first one uh, someone's ever wished me. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. So, TikTok has been good to you lately. Well, yes. Not really. It wasn't really an expected thing or something that I planned or necessarily even desired, but it just sort of happened. <laughs> so, tell me about your first viral video. Yes. How did that come about? So I've been on TikTok mainly as a lurker. You know, I just blew on there to watch the funny videos. And I had probably less than a thousand followers. And after the November elections, a lot of people were complaining, not just in Georgia, but across the country about Marjorie Taylor Greene winning and Stacey Abrams not winning. And I remember it was the Friday night after the election. And I was incredibly frustrated because I'm in Georgia and hearing all these people say all these things about Georgia is so redneck and they're so, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I went on TikTok and I just said, <laughs> I did a 60 second video and I was like, white women were never going to vote for Stacey Abrams because they could not stand to have a black woman over them. Ooh. And I, I don't even know where it came from except for just this incredible frustration I was feeling because I was frustrated she didn't get elected and I was frustrated at all the, the, the negativity that was going on in general toward, toward Georgians, but it's true. Mm. And um, then a lady came back, a black lady, and, and just to say that because, you know, and I wanted to address and she said, are white women really that scared of black women? And then I launched into this three minute video trying to explain why I thought yes. And I used the term fear because she used the term fear. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's really more of an intimidation, and people got that, but a lot of people have, have not watched the video all the way through and have not gotten the whole context of it, and there was a lot of context that was more toward the end about the why of that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it took off, and um, I think it has almost 3 million views now, wow. and I think I have like getting close to 70,000 followers, mm. so it's been... It's been it's been it's been a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because I think it touched a lot of people, especially black women. It did. And, and, and I was I was honestly a little surprised by that. I mean, I, you know, the, I, I would say the majority of the comments, and this is, you know, breaking it down very on the, the base level is, you know, where they felt seen. They yeah. felt seen and that they were surprised that a white woman would actually admit or say the things that I said. Yeah. And I honestly had never thought about. Do you know how many rules, carnal rules you just broke? <laughs> Well, no, I get told I get told a lot by white. Well, I don't say a lot, fair number, but not every white woman, not yeah. this white woman. Yeah. But you know, my thing is, until it's none of us, it's all of us because yeah. it's all of our problem. And wow. you know, I'm not going to stop saying we because it is we. You know. Yeah. So I think the reason why I touched black women was because we had those stories. We've been in. We've been in the workforce longer than white women, and I don't think no one really talks about that. Black women have been in the workforce since what, since we've gotten here, uh, once we were released, you know, in emancipation, yeah. 1865. We were forced to maintain that sense of work. They passed laws and bills. I don't know. Did you know that? That I don't know that I knew that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I didn't know that either. So they had passed laws that forced black women out of their homes, taking care of their husband and their children, wow. and made them go to work. In fact, in, in a lot of states, in southern states, they actually, um, I don't know if you know about Color Purple, but there's a scene in Color Purple where Oprah is, you know, I guess with her kids and a white lady walks up and says, oh, your kids are so clean. You want to work for me? That was actually a law. And <laughs> if you had... No, seriously, if you had uh, said no and you weren't working, you could be locked up. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. Crazy. So if a black woman 
was not working and a white woman <laughs> asked them to work for them, they had to. Wow. I mean, and someone pointed that out, and I believe it was a, a black woman who said, you know, black women have never had the luxury of not having to work. That is That was so how she true. said it. And, you know, white women, until fairly recently in the world scheme of things, have been housewives. Yeah. And, you know, one of my, the things I talked about on there is, you know, white women have been trained mm -hmm. by white men, the patriarchy, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. white supremacy, you know, to be docile and meek and quiet mm -hmm. and not speak out. And when you do speak out, you are ostracized or punished for doing that. Yeah. And when you are, you know, a good white girl, you know, you're, you're praised and you're rewarded for that. And I know, and I know I speak in generalities, but, and some people say, we have the same thing, and I get that, but... I think it's much more prevalent, and it does. And I think you know, ge geographically, and also re you know, religion affects some of that because I, mm -hmm. you know, the evangelicals. That's a whole different level of <laughs> of, yeah. of putting of putting onus on on white women about wh how you need to be, you know, in the world, you know, subservient. And um, you know, it's just it's just really sad, honestly, because I think someone made the the comment that you know, instead of being intimidated by black women, white women should be inspired by them. Wow. And that's the way you know that I feel we should be inspired by them. And yet we don't live to be our authentic selves. And that's, that's something I talk about all the time on TikTok is being your authentic capital S self, which mm. is my therapist calls when you're truly yourself, you're your capital S self. And I feel like black women live in their capital S self and mm. white women do not, mm. really don't. And, um, and it's just, it's really sad because I think we white women have been taught to believe we don't have power and our power is not in our womanhood, it's in our proximity to whiteness. Or in, our, white or, or in our whiteness mm -hmm. and, and whereas white yeah, and in white men exactly and um whereas black women you know your your power is in your womanhood yeah. and it's and it's at odds and in some ways that has been built up that we are put at odds i think black women and white women by the patriarchy and um you know but the willingness for white women to overcome that is the is the issue because there is comfort in what you know and there's discomfort in what you don't know yeah. and you know to there's that fear of oh if i go against and i do this and that i'll you know i'll lose all my privilege i mean i i am one of those people who i live in a very small southern town um i am loud i've been called defensive i've mm -hmm. been called aggressive mm -hmm. you know i've been called all these things i lost a job because of it mm. um because there was an, an older white woman who did not like me and did not like the fact that i was you know assertive and um, made it her her job to get rid of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I mean, you know, and that it was part of it. And um, it, it's just it's just really sad. It's it just really sad that that. And I see a lot. I see a lot of white women like when they get to be my age because I'm in my early fifties, and their kids are out of the house and they're divorcing, mm. and they all of a sudden wake up and are like, Who am, who am I? I? Right. Yeah, who am I? Who is this person? This you know, my husband. Like who? What? Have, I've been a Your whole I've been a mom. I've been a wife. It's I've been a daughter. I've been a whatever. Yeah. But I've never been me. Mm -hmm. And that was what I faced. I don't have children, but I divorced a few years ago. And when I divorced, it was the same time that George Floyd and a lot of the Black Lives Matter started happening. And I remember one of the first things I told my therapist after I divorced was like, I don't know who Julie is. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know who I am as a person because I had lived my whole life for everyone but me. And I started to develop an identity and a personality and decide who I wanted to be in the world. And, um, you know, it, it is scary. It's really scary to go through that. But on the other side, I think someone said on TikTok, on the other side of discomfort is greatness. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but, you know, you have to be willing to go through that fire, through that discomfort to get to that greatness. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's not easy. Let me tell you what I appreciate about white women. Um, I have known white women ever since I was very, very young. There is a certain level of ease that you guys have that we do not have, right? So you can have an easy Sunday morning, make some tea. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can start planting flowers. You know what I'm saying? We don't have that life. We never had that life. We never had it easy. So when we're looking at, you know, TV or now social media and we, we're seeing like just being basic. No, seriously, <laughs> being basic is 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 now the thing. You know, yeah. I want to be basic all day. <laughs> I want to be someone's housewife all day. What are you talking about? You, you don't want me to go out there and, and, and have to fight? you know, with the white man or fight with whoever, I don't have to work. I don't have to do all, listen, I'm learning from you guys. Well, but, and that was something that came up a lot in, in comments to my post where a lot of black women, because I, you know, I commented on your strength and how yeah. much I admired that. And, and, 
they said, but we don't want to be strong. We don't We're tired of being be. strong. <laughs> We're strong. We're strong because we have, have to, to be. be. Yeah, that's what they said. And there's know, a difference. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a huge difference. Our, I, yeah. We saw our grandmother do it. We saw our mother do it. Our aunts, our cousins. We saw them all be strong. Yeah. And, and that's just how it went. And you know? honestly, I had never thought about that, like, because I don't live that life. And, yeah. you know, and I, I mean, I still think it's something to be admired. Yeah. But knowing that you don't, didn't really have the option, you know, it was it was something that you, you know, we have to be strong because that's, you have your, your skin color against you and the fact that you're a woman. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's, you're the lowest person on the totem exactly. pole. And so you have to be strong to, in order to live your life. You do. You do. So tell me, um, what, what got you into this really? Like what, what, what woke you up? Cause I like to use the word woke. I mean, I, and I, I know these are like stupid things to say, but my, my parents did not raise us. <laughs> I know you don't say that. Your parents like, did not raise no, you I mean, I, I was raised in a town where I, like, I went to an elementary school where two thirds of the kids were black and one third were white. And mm-hmm. I always had, you know, black friends. And then when we moved to, to a town when I was in my um, teens, early teens, and I remember going to the school and it was all white kids. And I was like, where are all the black kids? Mm. <laughs> and I just, it never, but then, you know, when you get into adulthood, you tend to, I think that's when people tend to like section off to their race mm-hmm. more. Yeah. And, um, you know, but my friends now, I have no close female white friends. Mm-hmm. My two closest friends, one is a, a black woman and one is a Latino woman. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, I, like I said, I, I, I don't. You know, I've been accused of a lot of things, but I just, I have problems with a lot of the women that live where I live yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the way you they should act. Move. You should I, move. I should move, but you my parents move. are come there, on, unfortunately. Come on, come on to Atlanta. You'll yeah. have fun. But I mean, honestly, it's just, I just want to be a good, kind person and recognize the fact that there there are people in this world that are treated really shitty for no reason. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> Except for you the fact the that, word you know, sh- who they love or their skin color or whatever. Yeah. And that's just, it's, it's. It's not right. What should allies be doing right now? Because I'm, I'm going to consider you an ally. Yeah. What should allies be doing? Well, I mean, we have to get our people <laughs> together. Yeah, I mean, get them together. And I don't, I don't even know. I feel like you know, there's a group of white women that are never going to come over. They're mm-hmm. never going to come over. They're going to be firmly rooted in racism, white supremacy, whatever you, you know, want to call it. They're not just going to. They're never going to come Do over. Do you think that maybe it's not that they hate, or maybe they? It's just not in their proximity. Like yeah. They just don't know anything about it, so why should they even have to learn? Yeah, exactly. And I, I think the, where, what I'm well, say more concerned about is I think there are a lot of white women sort of in the middle, mm-hmm. but they are intimidated to start the process, or they don't know where to go, or they'll misstep. Because I've had women they DM me through TikTok and say, I, I love what you're saying, white mm-hmm. women, and I want to be involved, but like I don't want to say the wrong thing and like upset a black woman, or I don't want to, you know. And so I try to direct them to some of the black content creators because that's what I did. I'll be 100% honest. When I first started, when I first started looking, when all the BLM stuff was going on, mm-hmm. I came on some really great content creators on there. Portia Noir, Noir mm-hmm. I don't know if you know her, she's great. White Woman Whisperer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that whole, not this white woman, yeah. you know, when I was listening to them. And then I was, you know, kept listening and not speaking. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that that's me. That's not them, you know. And I think Portia said, has this great comment about when you respond, you, your only intent is to defend yourself, not to really comprehend what someone is saying. Mm. And um, and so I started listening to them and I was like, they're right. They're right. And, and that, you know, was a huge moment for me. And I think, you know, the, the women that are actively doing the work need to continue to do that work. But I also think that there is some leeway. And I've had this conversation with some other some other white women on the app that are, you know, doing the work, as they say, about making it more accessible to more white women so mm-hmm. that they feel that they can be involved. And, and it's not it's not an intimidation thing for them. Because I think they I, I think there's a lot of times there's a lot of big words that are used and, you know, concepts and. Some of it, t- sometimes, like I said, is just doing, doing the right thing <laughs> to yeah. a certain degree. I will say that uh, we're not blaming white people now. Yes. We're just blaming your grandparents. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're blaming oh, the some, system. Well, we're blaming a couple of y'all, <laughs> but not all of y'all. Not all of them. Maybe like, maybe like yeah. Let me just say the most qualifier, are not no. all white people. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> white, white people. White people. <laughs> so what are you doing, Ally, to bridge the gap? Well, honestly, you know, being the video going viral made now I feel a responsibility to carry on what I did. And so I I purposely, you know, I try not to talk about anything I don't know about. Like people Mm -hmm. said, oh, comment on reparations or comment on black men. It's like, no, I'm not going to comment on that because I have no experience with that. So I talk 
from the space I'm in, which is yeah. being a white woman yeah. and, and what white women do and how we respond. And, you know, when I see white women doing stupid things, commenting on that. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like now I've been put in a position. And honestly, the, the black women have been so encouraging and supportive of me. And I had a little melt, meltdown. Y'all go look at my videos this past <laughs> Friday, Saturday night. Because, I've, because I went through a lot of loss and a lot of depression over a period of time. And um, y'all love like no one I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm telling you. Black women, y'all love the community and the love and the sisterhood. It is so. Because we're human first. Oh, my God. We're everything else second. Yeah. We're human it is, it is overwhelming. And, I mean, the amount of love I have felt from the black women on that app, I mean, I'm getting teary-eyed right now, has just, it has almost healed a part of me, I, you know, from the sadness that I've had, just the acceptance and the we see you, because being seen is a, I think being seen is one of the most powerful things that you can do for someone, to see them for who they truly are. And, you know, I think that was why a lot of the black women responded to me because they felt like I saw them. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel that way in turn because I feel like a lot of them see me and love me for who I am. And, you know, and they're just, and they're always just so supportive and kind and sending me the nicest notes. And I honestly don't feel sometimes like I deserve all the kindness. No, listen, we need all the help <laughs> and you're doing the work. Talk to us about the hashtag that you got going Yeah, on. so I just, I wanted to do something. Cause I know, I mean, I know that most of my following now is black women and, and that they are the ones that, that did that. And so I wanted to do something to try to support them in turn. So it being Black History Month, I wanted to um, somehow allow people on TikTok to support black women and elevate their voices. So I came up with the hashtag BHM for Black History Month Takeover. Mm -hmm. And I've been asking people to use it, and especially white women, to promote black women's videos, to either repost them, stitch them, duet them, and use that hashtag. And I've, I've, I've seen some people doing it today. Unfortunately, when I started talking about this a few days ago, it seems like I might have been shadow banned or suppressed Oops. on TikTok. Really? Because a lot, yeah. Because I, I guess I was saying it's black. It's official. You're light skinned. Girl. I might have been saying black too much. I don't know. Welcome <laughs> to the other side, girl. We'll yeah. go. I was like, <laughs> is this, this thing on? I'm saying that, no, I'm saying this color too much. I was pointing <laughs> something black. But um, yes, I'm, I'm, I guess I need to get a TikTok gel. But yeah. other women are pulling it. TikTok or gel. It <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other women are pushing it forward, so I'm glad for that. And it is oh, the first good. day, but yeah. Um, and I noticed some black men have been using it too, and that's fine. I don't. Want, I'm not going to police the hashtag, but yeah. I was just trying to find something too that hadn't been used before. Yeah. So, um, but you know, I hope it'll it'll help push mm -hmm. some push some videos out there for black women, especially ones you know that have smaller um, platforms that they can be seen yeah. across platform. What do you want people to know about you? I think people know me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really I mean, I just, you. I mean, well, I mean, I just try to, I try to live my, again, my most authentic self these days. Mm -hmm. I try to truly be who I am. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of that is being empathetic and being kind. Yeah. And, and truly, I always say, you know, it's the, it's the 11th commandment, you know, but Jesus said, you know, love others if I have said, I have loved you. Mm -hmm. And if you're a true Christian, you know, that is how you should love without, you know, any Good kind of prejudice. Yeah. And that is how I want to live my life. And you know, being my authentic self and loving others and being kind. Love it. Are you ready? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> For random questions. Okay. She warned me all. So. Julie. <laughs> Guys. I, I felt like it. there should be some sort of, uh, we need to do like random questions. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm talking to our director over here. All right, Julie, finish this sentence. You ready? No. <laughs> you told Hoppo to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she told me that on the phone. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. She saw the movie, though. She cried. The movie. She cried. I she cried. She cried. cried like a baby. She cried. She cried. I ugly cried. I'm, I'm proud of you, girl. I'm proud of you. Okay. <laughs> next, next one, okay, finish uh, this. Uh, you probably not going to get it, but it's all good. good. Okay, this is a song lyric, okay? Uh oh. I got five. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you gotta give me 80s music. I'm an 80s baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kino, what's the end? What's the rest of it? Own it. <laughs> I got five. Okay. What song is that? By um, a rap group called The Loonies. Oh, yeah. See, yeah. That's, that's a From deep, that is a deep dive, y'all. Yeah. Come on. Listen, that's, that's our anthem. <laughs> um, okay. What is a jerry curl? Oh, that's a hairstyle. That's, that's like, right. that's, um, 
I don't know, oil. It's mm-hmm. like um, very oily. It's usually men wear it. Mm-hmm. And it was very really? popular in the men? 70s, 80s. Yeah, you, had a, you, had a, you had a jerk curl? They tried. They didn't take it. I want to ask Kelly. Did you have a jerk curl, girl? No <laughs> it was It was mostly men, though, I believe. That's who I was Everybody had jerk curls. Okay. Top boys in the hood. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Michael <laughs> Jackson? She saw. <laughs> no, okay. I do know that. I use ethnic hair care products. There you go. Because you know. Corn rolls. What are those? They're braids. Yes. <laughs> yes, I lie. Listen, the little black girls used to braid my hair on the playground. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Did, did they give you some corn rolls with beads? They No. No, but they did They did plait my hair. So I know what plaiting is. Plaiting. Oh. I know what plaiting is. Plait. Okay. Yeah. All right. I see you. All right. What should you not touch on a black woman? Their hair. Oh! I did a whole video about it. You see the video I did about it? <laughs> I was just testing her. Was testing her. Next question. A bonnet. No, <laughs> she Some tried it. She tried okay. it. What are chitterlings? Oh, they're pig guts. Mm. Pig intestines. Have you ever had some? No. I'm obsessed with chitterlings. I don't eat pork though. Good. So yeah. But have you ever been in a house where they've cooked them? Yes. It's awful. I live in the south. Oh um, yeah. yeah. So. I, it smells bad. You think they would stop cooking those? No, Mm-mm, probably mm. not. Mm. Mm. Name three of your favorite black actors. Ooh. Oh, I cannot think of her dang name. See, then I'm going to put on the spot. Denzel Washington. Of course. Um, oh, what is her name? It's going to drive me crazy. Octavia Spencer. Yes. And Viola Davis. Yes. <laughs> Good job. Oh, I can, I can see their faces. I can't think of them. I was like saying their names. Okay. If you get out of church, at, if you go to church on Sunday mm-hmm. at 10 a.m., what time are you expecting to leave church? Two or three, or maybe not all day, if you're black. <laughs> the question, the answer is wrong. Okay. You won't leave until Monday. Okay, yeah, okay. See, I'm Methodist. We get out in 45 minutes. Oh, this is the time to watch the football game, man. Yeah. I love you it. You got to get to to the um, Cracker Barrel before the Baptists do. Not the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Y'all know I'm right. Woo, scary. Who are some of your black favorite uh, content creators? Who? Um, you can just give me one or two. I know. Well, I mean, probably the two I mentioned. I think the two that I mentioned are probably two of the best educators is Portia Noir mm-hmm. and White Woman Whisperer. I mean, I think they do some really great content for education purposes and really stick with it, even though they get a lot of pushback from folks. And... Um, yeah, but they, I've, you know, there, there are so many really great, but there's a lot of funny, really funny people on there too. And that, um, Kelly Gales. Yeah, Kelly Gales, yeah. Yeah, send that to me. Um, what is a crip walk? Uh, it is a gang walk. It's like they shuffle their feet. Can you do it? No. Do you want to try? Done, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw the girl from Paramore do it and saw the whole thing about that. Really? Yeah. I feel like you could try it. No. Mm-mm. It's a two step. No. Okay, no. it's a little bit more than a two no. step. You're not going to try, huh? No. Not at all? No. Okay. <laughs> no Crip Walk for us. No okay. Crip walk. What about a Cabbage Patch? Do you know how to Cabbage Patch? Um, actually, I used to work for Cabbage Patch Kids. That, that was my first same job dude. I ever had. <laughs> but I know what it is. It's the. That is not it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what it is then. But it I is think a dance. that's the Roger Rabbit. It is a dance. It it's is a dance. A dance. It, is. Yes. it is. And I worked for Cabbage Patch. So I didn't get some points for that. What's up with those, uh, those, those birth certificates? And who was Roberts? Who's that guy? Oh, Xavier Roberts. He's a real person. Is he really? Yeah. Yeah. I met him. He lives. Wow. Yeah, he has a boatload of money mm. from that. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> What's your, uh, <clears throat> you, you, you got a kid now. Okay. Thinking about you having a kid, there's a toy, mm-hmm. two toys on the shelf, a black toy and a white toy. Your child is white. What toy are you getting? Huh? Whichever one they want. Ooh, <laughs> a Tonka toy it is. No, <laughs> they get whatever they want. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I see you. I see you, Tyree. Tyree Nichols. What's mm-hmm. your thoughts? I'm sorry. I'm just. I get emotional about it. And you know, I mean, I just. I can't even imagine what white people feel seeing that when I know how emotional I get thinking about it but this shit's just got to stop it's got to stop and I don't I mean I don't know what it's going to take to make it stop but it's just I don't even (laughs) 
Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it, the fact that it's so, it just seems like every time you turn around, you see a new story about it. And um, I hate that in some ways it was black officers that did it because I think people say, oh, see, black people can do it too. But, you know, I've seen so many black people say it's not, it's not about the color of the officers. It's about the, the you know, the, the policing, the policing part of it. And the fact that when you're indoctrinated and you go through all that training, you know, again, your proximity to that whiteness, you think it's okay to do that kind of stuff. And um, it's just, yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, again, I don't know what it's going to take, because this has been going on for, you know, several years now that we've known about how many cases have happened since even George Floyd or certainly Rodney King was years and years ago, but um, I wouldn't watch the videos. I won't watch them. I put something up on my Facebook page, you know, telling people not to watch them and to turn their, their sound down and stuff and put warnings up, because that is a trauma you should not have to endure. You should not have to do it. Yeah. I feel like everyone needs therapy after watching these videos. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty bad. All right, last question. <clears throat> I ask everyone this. You ready? Yeah. Okay, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. It's the end, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to see God. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting? You sure God I'm going to, to see say? God? <laughs> you seen big? You seen baby black Jesus? <laughs> you seen black Jesus? Um, it's the end, and 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 you're facing God. What do you What do you hope God say say to you or says to you? You did good. You did good. You think you did good? I'm trying to do my best. I think it took me a while to get to where I am, but I'm going to try to continue what I'm doing. I love it. Thank <laughs> you, Julie, for coming Thank to you. the podcast. Tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, my TikTok handle again is JSED33. So if you want to check me out there, and that's about it. I, I try to keep my private life pretty private. Um, unfortunately, I didn't say this in the, in the interview, but you know, I've, I've gotten a little bit of hate and pushback from my videos, so I, I know how. That's the how world, you know you're doing something right. I know exactly. That's what everybody keeps telling me. So that I try to, you know, but I'm, I just, you know, I'm, I'm cautious of that because the world can be a little crazy nowadays. It can be. Well, thank you again, thank Julie, you. for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Well, that'll wrap it up for us, guys. If you want to subscribe, like, share, comment, do all of that, and then some. And if you want to get in contact with us directly, make sure you reach out to us through uh, our email info at smittyandd.com. Again, that's info at smittyandd.com. Um, until then, we will see you soon.